Hello guys, uh, Henry here. Uh, just saying my thoughts on why we should come back together. 
And just off the cuff, off the top of my head, I think it's just good to see everyone again. Um, like when you haven't seen each other for a long time, you know, it's good to come back together and just seeing each other and remembering that we are a body, that, um, you know, everyone's in different places and good to have that fellowship again and catch up with people. Uh, often like, you know, when you have Father's Day and the dad wants to see all his kids again. Not that I'm at that place because my kids still live at home, but one day I'll be at that place where I just can't wait to see my kids again. So it's kind of like that with each other, like we can't wait to see each other. I know I miss that kind of general gathering and worship especially. Uh, I know we can't do that, but um, yeah, that's my thoughts on why it's good to come back to church. Hopefully see you guys soon. Well, it's 2021. Who would have guessed we would get here? But in 2021, we also have an opportunity for a fresh start with Jesus, don't we? It's also the possibility in 2021 for a start with God for our community as well, in Belrose and in Davidson, French's Forest, and in Mona Vale, Terry Hills, Warrywood, Alambi Heights, Beacon Hill, DY, Forestville. Do you believe this is possible? Of course it's possible with God. I've been reading some new books this year in uh, this little gap between Christmas and New Year. One of them is a book by Sinclair Ferguson, In the Name of Our Lord. And basically it's a, um, it's a reader, a church history reader, with the emphasis on saying that the Church of Christ will always prevail through all the sufferings of every century. It's a really good book. The other book I'm reading is one by, um, it's only 100 pages, so an easy read, by Rico Tice called Honest Evangelism. Very challenging book, but a quick read. And interestingly, Rico's wife, Lucy, spent some time in Kangaroo Valley, living there for um, quite a while. What a small world we live in. One of the helpful things Rico Tice talks about in his book is that God has put you and me in this area, here at this particular time, and he's put our friends and people in our community here also at this particular time so that our community has the opportunity to hear about the good news of Jesus. And you know what? That's what God did for Athens too in our reading today that was read out by Neil Cranmer, even with laryngitis. So thank you, Neil. Now, in Acts chapter 17, it's quite a well-known passage, this one, isn't it? The Apostle Paul was waiting temporarily in Athens for his peers. And the people of Athens, in the synagogue, in the marketplace, in the Areopagus, They were there in God's providence so they could hear the good news of Jesus from Paul in this particular moment in history and make a fresh start with God themselves. God planned it that way in his sovereignty. So what did Paul do to help this process along that could practically help us in our Christian witness in 2021 to help our community have a fresh start with God? as we ourselves have one with him. Well, as someone who wanted to share his faith with the people in Athens, Paul had to first understand Athenian culture. Now, let's take a time out. I want you to, if you can, um, in just a moment, pause this sermon. And I want you to ask yourself this question. If you looked around our area, what do you think are the particular characteristics of this suburban village we live in. Can I give you some time just to talk about that together in your household or by yourself, write it down? Okay, in no particular order. There's a real dedication to community here. 
People seem to appreciate what they have here. They're not waiting to move to a better suburb. They want to stay here if they can. Um, Children, there's a real commitment to bringing children up in community here too. We've noticed. Also, there's a bit of a sporty culture going on. Lionel Watts, a lot of people up at the Oval a lot of the time. Now, when Paul looks at the culture of Athens closely... The Bible says Paul's spirit was provoked within him. Did you notice that? Now, in other words, you know, Paul has the Holy Spirit living in him. Presumably, it's knocking at his spirit of Paul such that he could not keep silent after he looked around Athens and noticed the culture. So we saw people were moving away from God, moving towards idols, false gods like Hermes being worshipped and praised. And he saw Jesus wasn't being glorified. And he felt the grief of that. Now, Athenians, uh, they were seeking enjoyment and pleasure, intellectual, intelligent debate. They liked discussing philosophy and ideas of philosophy and bettering humanity to the point where they'd left God behind. So Paul could see from his observing that the people of Athens needed a start with the true God, a fresh start. Can I ask you now too another question? Do you see that the people of Belrose and Davidson, French's Forest, Forestville and surrounds, despite their decency and kindness, are lost and that they need a start with God too? I hope you feel that same sense of grief for others in our area who are not Christians as we head into 2021. And I hope that God gives us that provocation of our spirits to feel the grief of that and do something about it. Because Paul does something about that feeling he gets when he's walking around Athens. He reasons with the Jews first, it says, as he always does. Then he goes into town And he speaks in the marketplace with anyone who will listen. I think that's verse 17 of Acts 17. Now, perhaps that particular approach of, you know, standing on the soapbox may not be that effective in 2021, perhaps. But Paul knows that for the people of Athens to have a start with God, they've got to hear the word of God and know the true God through the words of God about Jesus' death and resurrection what it means for them, new life with God. You know, the kingdom has arrived in Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Now, uh, Rico Tice, let me take you back to this book, punchy little book. He tells the story, Rico Tice, of a bloke called Penn Gillette. Unusual name, isn't it? Some of you may have heard of the uh, duo Penn and Teller. They're an American... Uh, magic act duo that have been around since the 70s they've also had a tv program where they debunk magic tricks and they expose them you know and also even religious mumbo jumbo and seances and they like to expose frauds and falsehoods pen Gillette himself is actually a staunch atheist but it doesn't mean he dismisses people who believe in god and Rico Tice tells this story of one time when, um, it's back in 2008, Penn and Teller had just finished a performance. Someone came in to see them after the performance and handed them a Gideon Bible and said, look, this is really important, what's in this book. It's really important for you to read this because it could save your life, or words to that effect. He had respect for that Christian because he had the courage of his beliefs and the urgency to share it with uh, Pendulette. Good story, isn't it? Now, friends, hell is not the place we want anyone in our local area to spend eternity in. We want our friends and everyone in our community to spend eternity with God, at peace with him, in fellowship with him, forever. 
Now, if you go back to the Acts 17 reading, the response Paul gets to his uh, sharing of Jesus, well, it's mixed, really. Some people reply with, what's this babbler trying to say? Paul's basically mocked as a simpleton by the Epicureans. Now, now they were the materialists saying the pleasure is great. And also by the Stoics who believe that reason is the answer to everything and being self-sufficient is key. So really there are plenty of Epicureans and Stoics around in our community today too. But Paul is obedient to God, he sticks with the task and you never expect what opportunities God will give you when you follow his spirit promptings, if you like. So here Paul was invited due to his persistence and obedience to the Lord to go to the Areopagus, which is basically the higher court that ruled over Athens. Now when Paul goes and speaks to this group, where God puts him at this particular time in this particular place, he can then say to the Areopagus the results of his insights into the culture of Athens. So all of these things have come together because God has sewed them all together. Incredible, isn't it? So Paul's able to say to these very elite Athenians, I can see that you are a deeply religious people. I've looked at your objects of worship. I've seen the plaque which says, to an unknown God. He also had um, heard in verse 28, where it says, you know, for we are indeed his offspring. Paul's gone and heard the Athenian poets This is a quote from one of their poems. So he's obviously read the local poetry or he's heard a poet recite his works at the marketplace and he's been able to then go to the Areopagus. So he opens these cultural insights he's seen in order to explain in context to the Athenians how to become a Christian. I proclaim to you, he says in verse 24, the known God. And he says to them, well, basically, you can have a fresh start with God too. Let me tell you about him. Can I just say to you all in this new 2021, whatever shape it takes for us, God has placed us here in this particular time, in this particular place, here in Belrose, in Davidson, in French's Forest, Beacon Hill, Alambie Heights, D.Y., Forestville, Mona Vale, Warrywood, and other suburbs of the forest and beyond to be the aroma of Christ as well as to enjoy living here. Thank you, God. God wants a fresh start for our community. We can explain that God is the source of all the great things that we listed about this suburban village a bit earlier on. Then Paul continues his speech to the Areopagus God's allotted Paul to be in Athens at that time, at that place, so that the Athenians could hear the good news of Christ. It's no accident that you are here today in this area, at this time and place, and that there are residents here also in this particular time and place, and that St Stephen's is here in this particular time and place. But what our friends near us make of the good news of Jesus, well, they are of age. They can make their own decision. But God has gone before us and before them to make this intersection happen. It's God's sovereignty, isn't it? To help people in our community have a fresh start with God, with their maker, with their creator, with their Lord, the Lord Jesus They need to hear the gospel. They need Jesus. And as Paul says to the Athenians, God is not far away from their community. God is not that far away from every person here in our community. Though mostly unknown at this point in time by them. So please pray, won't you, that we have the thoughtfulness to make the most of every opportunity we have to be the aroma of Christ in the forest.
and to be intentional about our faith. Well, in Athens, when people gave this talk, some heard about the resurrection of Jesus, as we said before, from the dead, and some mocked him. We don't like being mocked. I don't like being thought of as a simpleton. You don't. But, you know, some people believed after Paul's speech in Athens. Dionysius, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris also, and others with them, they were saved from hell after Paul's witness. They were rescued for eternity. Do we fear we'll get our words clumsy and wrong as Christians? Yep, (laughs) absolutely. But people are not going to become Christians because of how we string words together. Of course not. They'll never do that. That's something Rico Tice says in his book too. It's not our job to save people. It's God's job to win people for Christ. God is the one who turns the lights on in the dark hall so that people will become Christians. And our community needs to know Jesus. If not, they'll be judged, God says, and they'll spend eternity in hell. But they need to hear the word of God. So let's pray this 2021 for a fresh start for ourselves. It's been a tough year, hasn't it? Are you exhausted, a bit worn out, a bit weary of this whole thing? True. We need a fresh start so we can delight in God uh, and be more resilient with him through what we're going through. But let's pray that God will remind us that all of our conversations and friendships with people who are not Christians, they're to be enjoyed and delighted in too. But they're also ordained by God so that people can know Jesus. So let's pray also for a fresh start with Jesus for our suburban village that we live in, in 2021.